Red and black are the colours of the well-known Dutch lifting engineering company Mammut. And this model in Mammut colours is of a 130 tonne Grove Mobile Crane. It is made by WSI but it derives originally from a model made by TWH Collectibles. There are no instructions for the model but there is a reprint of the original Grove brochure for the machine. So it's full of lifting charts that you can use when you're planning big lifts for your model. Also included is a Mammut certificate. Out of the box there were a couple of small issues with the review model. Firstly there was an exhaust that was loose in the box, but that just presses into place easily. And a bit of help from our old friend Superglue, we'll stick it there. The model does come ready reefed, but certainly the review model was not in any way correct, so we need to cut the rope and do it properly. There is an issue with the model in that it is practically impossible to use the tie off point because of the riveted connection. So the engineers at Cranes etc have replaced the rivet with a small nut and bolt. With the hook re reeved you can attach it to the cab, but it doesn't hang straight because the hook doesn't rotate. The counterweight is already attached out of the box so we need to remove it to get the crane in a travelling mode. And it's a job for a screwdriver and some careful handling to remove the counterweight slabs. Also unusual on a WSI model is the need to fit mirrors. And that includes an extra long one that goes over the front of the cab. The other mirrors fitted well but this one's just a little bit looser. And there's also another mirror which fits on the outside of the crane body. Ok the mirrors are on and we are looking good so the last job to do is to fit the fly jib. And once you've located it properly it's secured in place with a couple of steel pins. With the crane resting on its back we can see that the chassis is very detailed and that includes hoses running to each axle. The driving cab looks good and it's got a realistic number plate from the real crane. And as added detail you can see a fire extinguisher inside the cab. The high detail continues behind the cab with a mesh grille and cables running into the fuel tank. Towards the back there are small warning graphics and a nice big spare wheel. Detail on the boom is good with a couple of big spooling drums. Mammut is printed on the top telescopic section, but the pulleys in the boom head and hook are solid blocks. The lattice fly jib is a decent metal part. For the review of the features we'll start on the Cranes Etc couch with the model resting on its back. Axles 1 and 2 are linked as are axles 4 and 5, but axle 3 doesn't steer which is not like the real crane. There is sprung suspension on each axle and that works well. And if we want to drive the crane along it rolls reasonably smoothly. But let's try the high pressing game and the suspension works well also. To set the crane up we pull out the outriggers and the beams are a single casting and not two stage telescopic. So they don't really come out far enough but you can wind down the pads and they will hold the crane wheels free. To get your boom up you need to use your finger and thumb to lower the hook a little so you can disconnect it. After that we can raise the boom up and it's easy to do because the hydraulic ram is not very stiff. We had previously removed the counterweight blocks and here they are, they are all separate pieces. And you can display the counterweight mounted on the carrier deck. And in that way you can pose the model loading up its own counterweight. If you want to go for the maximum lifting capacity you can also add on the side cheek weights. With that loaded up the real crane would then rotate to attach its own counterweight. But the tolerances on the model don't allow that to be properly simulated. The boom is telescopic with six sections overall and they just pull out. And on the review model there was a bit of friction between the sections. So you had to pull a bit to get them going. But at least the friction means that the telescope won't collapse back in. Because the main boom ram isn't very stiff there are a couple of positions in which you can insert pins. And that gives you a couple of backstop positions so that the boom won't collapse down, knocking all your teeth out as it falls. A couple of other smaller features on the model include an opening tool chest. So you could store the model pins if you wanted. And there's also a tilting cab so the driver can get comfortable for a nice sleep. As far as working the crane is concerned the winch does not have a brake. And it's too loose to hold any load without some kind of intervention. <music> the 
Let's now make some use of some more flexibility on the model by attaching the fly jib and it pins to the boom head using a pair of large steel pins. They can be a little bit fiddly to get in place but it's nothing that a Cranes etc buffoon can't handle. If you want an even greater reach on the jib you can swing out the folding section and that also pins into position. Once you've got the hook on you can then adjust the angle of the fly jib by using the hydraulic ram and it's stiff enough to hold a pose. As another option you can also configure a very short lifting head and the hinged pulleys allow you to get a decent line for the rope. So that's the features, let's go for a dim check to see how high the model can reach. And on the main boom it's up to 45 inches or 115 centimeters. And if you go for the full fly jib, it's about 59 inches or 150 centimeters. This is a nice looking mobile crane model from WSI and just some aspects of it such as the outrigger beams and solid pulley blocks are a little bit dated. However the limited edition Mammut colour scheme always looks good and it's very collectible. Overall the model is good enough to be highly recommended. Yeah.